All right, we're here with Doc Positive in the back part of the kennel at East Stroudsburg Veterinary Hospital. What I'm trying to show here is we have six pit bull puppies on intravenous fluids being treated for parvovirus. We've got a real problem with parvo. It's actually one, one family multiple owners, multiple dogs, but all with the same common exposure. Uh, so uh, I'm going to give you a little rundown in a bit on Parvo, but here you can see all the IV fluids, the IV fluid pumps. Uh, these puppies are really, really sick. Uh, I'm not getting too close there because uh, they're not in quarantine per se, but we're definitely trying to limit the contact. We have the gowns back there so that when the nurses come back, we have the uh, little radiator to try and get some extra warmth back here for these puppies. We've got the gloves and basically doing the best we can to keep these dogs isolated in our hospital and uh, away from everybody else because of how contagious parvovirus is. More to follow. All right, we're here with Manny and we're talking about parvovirus. Uh, I showed a little clip of the puppies that we have downstairs. We currently have six pit bull puppies hospitalized for parvovirus. The reason we're shooting this in the exam room is because Parvovirus is so contagious. It is very contagious from puppy to puppy. That's why we're here in the exam room. Uh, but parvovirus is a virus that attacks particularly the lining of the intestinal tract. Um, puppies usually are most at risk between the ages of six weeks and six months. And there are some puppies that are more at risk. Uh, some of the dogs that people think of as particularly uh, strong, tough dogs like the Pit Bulls, Rottweilers, Dobermans, German Shepherds, Labradors, for some reason some of those breeds actually seem to be more susceptible to parvovirus. Parvovirus has been around probably since the early 80s uh, is when it really hit in veterinary medicine, the late 70s, early 80s. Vaccination is very, very effective, very protective. Puppies that have been vaccinated for parvovirus, well vaccinated, are low risk for this uh, infection. Puppies that haven't been vaccinated, they're very, very susceptible. It is very contagious through what's called a fecal oral route. That means contact with the, the diarrhea, the stool, because parvovirus does cause vomiting, diarrhea, loss of appetite, weakness, and so forth and it usually has an incubation period. Puppies that are exposed to a dog with parvovirus, they uh, will not show signs and symptoms themselves often for six to 10 days. It varies a little bit, but, uh, so sometimes people think they're home free. They're around the dog, uh, but uh, it's very contagious and it takes that amount of time. And then puppies, from the time they're infected till they're affected, they can actually be spreading that virus in their stool before they appear to be sick. So that's what makes it a real problem is uh, some of these puppies are spreading this uh, without even showing signs and symptoms. These dogs that are hospitalized, the reason they're hospitalized is because with that profuse vomiting and diarrhea in these puppies, they uh, tend to get dehydrated, um, they tend to get uh, septic, and so Oftentimes they're hospitalized on intravenous fluids to maintain their hydration. They're also oftentimes on drugs to try and help protect uh, intravenous. Most of the medications are given intravenously injections because these puppies can't keep anything down. They're vomiting, they're diarrhea. If you try and give them any oral medication, if you try and give them any oral food, they will bring it back up. Uh, this gentleman had a female pit bull and three puppies that were hospitalized somewhere else. Uh, they, didn't, uh, they were sent home while they were still vomiting with medicine, so they obviously weren't able to keep that medicine down. 
He brought those dogs to us last week. We didn't realize quite the number of dogs that this family has amongst the, the number of different houses. Um, they weren't really up front with us, and so now they have a big problem because they thought some of these puppies were home free because they weren't showing any signs and symptoms. Uh, I wrote down a couple of things here as far as the parvovirus. It is certainly a systemic illness that affects the gastrointestinal and also their immune system uh, because the white blood cells are being consumed trying to fight off this infection. These dogs uh, are very, very ill. Um, the severe cases of parvovirus can actually result in a toxic shock. They can get septic and uh, they can die. Uh, it's very contagious, it spreads very easily, and the big thing is the younger the dog, the smaller the dog, the more severe the disease because those dogs get dehydrated very easily, uh, they just don't have the reserves to fight off the, the disease like a bigger dog does. So generally the older the dog, the older the puppy, the bigger the puppy, the better the prognosis. Uh, there is a form of parvovirus, sometimes people will talk about a parvovirus that attacks the heart. There's a couple of different types of parvovirus, and that type of parvovirus is usually uh, not as common as the gastrointestinal type. Uh, incidence is really low in vaccinated dogs, so if your dog has been well vaccinated, uh, it's not too much of a problem. In dogs that have uh, survived parvovirus, they probably have the best immunity. They're probably protected for life from their natural uh, antibodies. Um, the test for uh, parvovirus is generally a test on the stool. We get a stool sample, the diarrhea sample. Uh, we get the results in a few minutes. That's called an ELISA test. Enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay. You don't need to remember that. But uh, you can get occasionally some false negatives. Uh, very rarely you can get a false positive. The, the most common reason for a false positive is if the dog is tested after it was uh, vaccinated a little bit ago with a, a modified live vaccine. The thing about parvovirus is it can be very, very contagious in the environment. So people that just clean up the vomit, clean up the diarrhea, but uh, it's very, very susceptible to a dilute bleach solution. So if you use a bleach solution to clean up an area afterwards, uh, one part bleach to 30 parts of water, um, the, the, the vaccine for parvovirus is very, very effective in puppies. The main reason the vaccine doesn't work in some puppies is people may be vaccinating these puppies uh, while they still have maternal antibodies. Uh, and one of the things about being this close to Pocono Medical Center is occasionally we get some background ambulance to liven things up here a little bit. Uh, but the vaccine maternal antibodies can affect the ability of the puppy to develop his own immunity. And that's why puppies get a series of vaccines. You know, 9, 12, 16 weeks. And some of these high-risk dogs, like the pit bulls, the rottweilers, the dobies, uh, labradors, German shepherds, uh, they may even benefit from being vaccinated a couple additional times because of their increased susceptibility to it. Um, these dogs are hospitalized. They're on intravenous fluids. They're on intravenous medication to help stimulate and protect the lining of their digestive tract. Uh, some of these puppies are on anti-inflammatories because they can be uh, uncomfortable and painful. Uh, and generally, the, the course of action, um, <clears throat> the lower the white blood cell count gets, usually the poorer the prognosis in these puppies. So we do uh, check blood levels, we check their kidney function, we check their liver function. Uh, you know, making sure that they're hydrated, not having other organ uh, problems because primarily of the dehydration. And so I wanted to review with you guys a little bit the, uh, the parvovirus, because everybody else hears about parvovirus. The big thing that I will tell you is that most vaccines that vaccinate your dog against distemper also include parvovirus. Uh, veterinarian 
vaccines have traditionally been called uh, the vaccine, the distemper vaccine. And that vaccine oftentimes vaccinates against distemper, hepatitis, parvovirus, parainfluenza, even leptospirosis oftentimes. So uh, at my office, I'm trying to get people to uh, not call it the distemper vaccine, but the parvo distemper vaccine. Uh, that way people are aware that uh, the parvo uh, vaccine is included with most uh, veterinary distemper vaccines. These need to be vaccinated multiple times in order to develop uh, good immunity against that disease. So we have uh, several of these pit bull puppies hospitalized. We'll keep you posted on how they're doing. Uh, they're also on medication to try and suppress the vomiting. But the big thing is uh, providing supportive care. There is no treatment specifically for the parvovirus itself. We're providing supportive care, keeping these puppies alive, keeping these puppies hydrated, trying to reduce other infections, trying to reduce cross-contamination. Uh, we generally have our nurses, we keep them hospitalized away from anybody else in the hospital. Uh, the nurses gown up, glove up, decontaminate after they handle these puppies so as to reduce uh, what's called a nosocomial infection or spread throughout uh, a disease that's in the hospital itself, which we obviously try and avoid at all costs. So, Parvo, uh, we don't see as much of it uh, since uh, vaccines have been developed. But like I said, uh, in the late 70s and early 80s when Parvo uh, first hit and there was not a vaccine, at that time uh, grown dogs, adult, you know, dogs across the board, uh, it's much uh, less of a problem today. Uh, it's especially a problem in breeding kennels, shelter environments, areas where people don't vaccinate their dogs, in areas where people tend to good veterinary care, see their veterinarians, get their puppies vaccinated. One of the key things for puppies is puppies need to be vaccinated against disease in order to develop their own protection and their own immunity. An unvaccinated puppy is susceptible to disease. And this is an example of that because this uh, fellow's kennel, he, you know, he had so many dogs, he wasn't taking them to the vet. He was vaccinating them himself. One of the things about vaccinating them himself is without uh, the education on how to handle vaccines properly, how to administer vaccines properly, he may have bought those vaccines, not kept them refrigerated, kept them at room temperature, uh, and they're just not effective uh, at that point. So he was vaccinating these dogs with vaccines that obviously weren't particularly effective because uh, he's now got a big problem in his kennel, and now uh, we have a problem. So, so far, <clears throat> the three uh, puppies and the mother went home. They're doing well. We had another puppy uh, last week, unfortunately. Uh, three of the puppies got to us on Saturday. They were smaller puppies. They were already very severely dehydrated, and those puppies, um, all three of those puppies died within a couple of hours of being admitted because of the state of dehydration. Uh, but these six puppies, um, We'll keep you posted. All right, bye now. That's Doc Positive from East Stroudsburg Veterinary Hospital and Pocono Animal Wellness Services giving you a little rundown on parvovirus.